podcast Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You could find me on Instagram, the It's Possible Guy. And today is episode 133, and it's entitled If You Keep Changing the Destination, You're Never Going to Arrive Anywhere. One of the things that I've seen in my own life is that I've changed my destinations so many times. As you move towards your destination of what you really want or the the goal that you're going after in your life or even where you feel guided, you're going to experience some challenges. You're going to experience some frustrations. And most of all, you're going to experience plenty of noise in your head. It's interesting, one of the things that I've seen is as somebody starts out something new, or or even somebody starts something again that they've tried before that they haven't worked, they haven't been able to succeed. Most people, unless you have some amazing, amazing circles of friends and supporters, are not going to cheer you on. Some might say, oh, what, what are they thinking? Don't they need security? Don't they need stability? First of all, not, nothing's really secure or stable anymore in life. And we don't need that. We just need to have this inner sense and this inner knowing that we're on the right path. Do you guys know how it feels when you just know something? Like it's almost matter of fact. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's what I need to do. Well, as you move towards that thing, you're going to have thinking arise in your head. You can call it the peanut gallery. You can call it critics. You could call it whatever you want. Move forward anyways. Now, this, this is a little bit harder to explain. Actually, maybe, maybe it's not. So there's the time that you know something is right for you. And as you move towards it, you're going to have thinking. There's a time when you just start moving towards something that feels off. Like it just, it does not feel true when you think about it or pray about it. It just doesn't feel like the right destination for you. No, that that certainty, those yucky feelings that, hey, this isn't it, is different than just having a lot of thinking that comes up in our head. That sometimes feels like confusion, but it's more so like dust in the air that will settle. So, like, what is the destination that you are moving towards right now? Do you have one? And how much of your time and energy do you spend working in that direction of that destination? I was watching a video that came up about Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was 20 years old when he won, I think it was the Mr. Universe or Mr. Olympia or whatever it was. But he spent five and six hours a day in the gym. And he says that everyone else around him they weren't enjoying being at the gym near as much as he was. But he had a vision, he had a desire for where he wanted to be in his life. 
I don't know about you guys, but the only destination I've ever really wanted, wanted, like truly, truly wanted, was to be married to the girl of my dreams and have a family. That's, that's all I've ever wanted. And I've never, and, and I've never wanted to have to create my life without that. And I guess it's a little bit like Heavenly Father saying, okay, Joseph, I, I, know, I know you could probably do really well with that. What can you do without that? What can you do without the stability and the enjoyment, everything else that comes from that? What do you got? Do you have enough to step up? Do you have enough to do the things that I've inspired and guided you to do? Will you show up? Or will you say, well, Heavenly Father, if you just gave me what I want, if you just gave me the girl of my dreams that's best for me and a family, then I'll do what you want. That's not how it works. Now, I don't know if you're sitting there thinking, yeah, Joseph, like all I've really ever wanted was to be a mom. All I've ever really wanted was to be married. It's interesting how much of a pull that can have on us. Why does it come, come up so often on these podcasts? Because it still has a decent pull on me. When I, when I have a girl that looks promising, my life really is different. But when I don't have a girl in my life, sometimes I struggle. Well, the other thing I know is we can always turn to Heavenly Father for His help and His guidance. We can turn to Him for strength that we just don't have. We can go to him and say, I don't feel like I have the strength to move forward in my life. And I don't want to. Like all, these, all this time and all these years we're spending, we're still spending our lives. And we're not spending them doing things that we really enjoy or love. I know most people aren't. But the thing that strikes me as well is you know, so many single people that desire to be married think that if only they were married, life would be better. But I know there's plenty of married people out there that are super jealous of single people. Like, oh, if only I had that level of freedom, I could do anything. Guess what? They're both lies. They are both lies. You're always going to have a challenge mixed with opportunity and you're going to have thinking that arises in your head about it. We think if only I had this much money in my bank account and then when we have that much money in our bank account, guess what? It doesn't change. So how do we break away from this, this stickiness, this stuckness where we get stuck on this path of our... like? How do we set our desires aside so we can pursue a direction? I'm not even saying your ultimate direction. I'm just saying a direction. You know, as Arnold Schwarzenegger said, he's like, I spent five and six hours a day in the gym. If you guys spent five and six hours a day on anything, you would get really good at it. But here's what happens. We start working on one thing. And then that crazy leprechaun thinking, which is a mixture of, you know, the adversary, our own habitual thought that's crystallized as well, pops up in our head and is like, hey, you doing the right thing? Is this really what you need to be working on right now? You need to be working harder. You need to be doing more. Is this really the right way to go about that dream? I'm sure there's a better way. Oh my goodness, guys, it is so subtle and clever 
It really is. Have you guys ever seen a cartoon where there's one of those shape-shifting characters that's constantly ship shifting shapes? But you know at the end of the day that it's just a bad guy? I want you to start treating all of your thoughts as lies. Other than the ones that leave you feeling peace. Because the adversary doesn't have to... He doesn't have to get you to do all kinds of bad things. He just has has to get you confused. Or struggling or stumbling. And not moving forward. That's all he has to do. He puts that thought in your head like... Hey, what, what good is it if you have nobody to spend your life with? What good is going to all these really cool places in the world? Well, yes, would it be awesome to be there with somebody? For sure. Have I been on vacations by myself and been really lonely and bored? Absolutely. Very much so. But at the end of the day, we just have to recognize that all it is is thought. It's like a bunch of... A a bunch of drunk people, for example, coming up and giving you advice. You're probably not going to take it too seriously. If you see someone stumbling around and you know, tried to give you advice, you're probably not going to take it. The same way if somebody comes up and starts screaming advice at you, you're probably not going to take it. So what do we do when thoughts arise that, that keep us from, or that try and keep us from going after our goal? Recognize that's just the way it is. Recognize There's always going to be challenges. It's been said that most of the largest battles that we ever fought are just inside of us. What if we started to recognize we don't have to fight that anymore? And we had a beautiful conversation this morning in a group that I'm in. And I was was super tired at the start of the call and I just... I I actually closed my camera and just lied on my bed and listened. And then after a while, my thinking really did begin to settle. And I saw things differently. All those panic thoughts, those urgent thoughts, those do something now thoughts are not helpful. And taking a moment sometimes to just allow the the thinking to settle will do wonders for you. And treating it all as mostly just lies and just noise. Just noise and background noise. So why do we keep changing our targets? Why do we keep changing our destinations? Like part of it is because we just don't have enough patience. You know, we live in a society of microwave popcorn and fast food. Now, most fast food is terrible for you. Terrible. And... Most of our fast, like those urgent thoughts are terrible for us as well. So we live in this world of fast food and fast everything. We think we should already be there. Oh, if only I would have started sooner. Yeah, that's nice. You got, you can do nothing about your past. But if you continue to do the same things that you have done for your past, you're going to have the same future. 
it is so cool to see people wake up to their potential and their possibilities. We, we live in this world of habitual thought. I, I, I was talking with somebody recently and, and they kept telling me when I'd ask them a question, no, I, I really do just want this you know, small life. I think most of that is our habitual thinking. And finally, I pushed back a little bit harder and I said, you know, if something pretty much just appeared in front of you, I guess you could kind of think it like this, uh, a genie magically can give you anything you want. Do you, would you take it? And they finally said, yes. Well, the same for each of us. We've been so programmed. We've been so conditioned to live a small life. There is nothing wrong with being okay and being, even being like content living the life that you have. You can always have more. You can always have bigger. You can always have better. And, and so there really is kind of a balance here. But I think most people don't let themselves want what they want. That's not your voice. That's the voice of other people you've listened to, whether it be parents, whether it be teachers, whether it be anybody. But I, when those thoughts come up, I want you to start noticing and paying attention to them. Well, does that feel good? Does that feel peaceful? I mean, I, I want you to even imagine God saying, like, you are meant to have a small life. Now, if it feels good and peaceful to you, awesome. I don't know what God wants for you. But I believe he wants us to go and grow. And, and part of growth is not having a small life. It, it's allowing ourselves to go after whatever we want and then putting all of our time and energy into that thing. Like I said with, with Schwarzenegger, you put five or six hours into anything, you'll get it. I think most of us know what we want. We just don't know the pathway to get there. But that's how it works. If, if I had never been to New York City, for example, and I didn't really know much about how, you know, the, the U.S. was structured. Like, yeah, I, I would probably struggle getting to New York City. But if I knew, well, I'm in Arizona. And I know that New York City is somewhere over there, over in that northeast area. Well, guess what? If I just get in a car and start driving east, I'm getting closer. Now, am I taking the perfect route to get to New York City? Maybe not. I doubt it. But every one of us has this, th this spirit, this inner knowing, this inner GPS that will guide and lead you. We're so busy listening to the chatter of everyone else that we can't hear it, though. You know, it's almost like you're driving in your car. And... You know, you're trying really hard to listen to the GPS, which to say for kicks and giggles that it doesn't, that you can't actually see the picture. It just tell you, you can only hear it. And everyone else in the car is like, no, dude, you got to turn here. You got to turn here. You got to turn here. Why are you going so slow? Speed up, slow down. Well, notice how the energy of their comments is different than that of the GPS. Turn right here. Turn left. Go straight. You're going to be going straight for 300 miles on this road. If you keep driving towards New York City, you will get there. Stop worrying about... No, there is no judgment in this because this is one of the things that I struggle with probably the most. 
stay in the car. I, I had a, a a geometry professor years ago that she would just say, like when somebody would start freaking out, like, stay in the car. Meaning, stop freaking out, stay in the car, and you'll get this. Yeah, you're going to have noise. You're going to wonder sometimes if you missed off, if you missed a turn, if you missed opportunities, if you if you're even doing the right thing. Stay in the car. Let your journey unfold. The only person that knows your journey is Heavenly Father. And if you just listen, you will do so well. But Joseph, I need to be there now. No, you'll get there when you get there. You really will. Every one of you has your own path, your own destination, your own thing that calls to you. A scripture in Proverbs 16, 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. I, I looked up the word devise on, on the dic- in the dictionary. And it says to invent, to contrive, to form in the mind by new combinations of ideas, new applications of principles, to plan, to scheme, to project. Well, the thing I like about that scripture, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Your heart knows what you want, but it doesn't know how to get there. But how much time and energy have you really put into that? You know, it was said of Andrew Carnegie that he, one of his great, th- his great powers was that he could focus on one thing for five minutes at a time. Most people can't spend 30 seconds focused on something. So what would happen if you went with your heart's desire? the thing that lights you up, the thing that brings you joy, the thing that you see yourself doing. And started putting most of your time and energy into that. The world will begin to move for you. There is a quote in the book, A Course in Miracles, that says, If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. If you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. That is such a glorious, glorious quote. Fear has a different feeling. The peanut gallery, the critics, the the crazy leprechaun voice in your head, it all has a different feeling to it. It feels different. But if you can just trust your own goodness, your own innate well-being, and no matter what the critics, no matter what the crazy leprechaun voice, no matter what anyone around you says, if you move towards your goal, your ultimate desire, the thing that you want most, you will get it. Because that's how it works. When you just don't stop walking towards New York City, you get it. It's all about where you focus your time and attention. Are you focusing your time and attention on the things that bring you light and joy? Are you focusing on the things that really... They fill a void. And I know for me, plenty of times when I play video games, it's more of a habit and it's just kind of filling the void. And then Heavenly Father gently reminds me that's not really what I want to be doing. And then my, (laughs) but, but that doesn't work. And so then my arms start to hurt and it's like, okay, well, 
Now I'm actually causing myself physical pain to play a game. This is stupid. Now I have to stop. I believe Heavenly Father has different levels of wake-up calls for us. It's like we wake up and we go back to sleep. We wake up and we go back to sleep. But he's just trying to get you back, get on the, the path that's going to make you the happiest. It's the way that you have chosen. And if you feel peace about it, the Lord is saying, yes, go that direction. I mean, I've even had some beautiful experiences where that have just been amazing. Like, we're so worried. I don't know about you guys. I'm, there's plenty of times I'm worried that I'm not on the right path. I mean, so much so that it's reminded me pretty constantly. And I'm grateful for that. What is the destination that you want most? I don't care if you haven't had it before. I don't care what the challenges and the things you think are in the way. It's always worth it. It's always worth it to do the thing that you really want to do the most. Always. So I'm going to ask you again. What is the thing that you want most in your life? Are you moving in the direction that you want to get it? Or are you allowing fear and doubt and insecurity? Now, this life passes by pretty quickly. Are you on the path you want to be on? Or are you distracted? Are you sitting by the side waiting for other things that you want to have happen in your life? What are you doing? I think we change our paths because we don't think we can have the thing that we actually want. So we go after something easier. And it's never easier because you don't really want it and you can't force yourself to want something that you don't want. I would invite each of you to get quiet and to really sit with this and say, okay, do I keep changing the path that I'm on? If I want to write a book, am I writing it? I, that, that voice is going to come up no matter what you're doing. But if whatever you're doing is moving you in a path that you desire, that you're pleased with and that you're happy about, just keep going. It's so easy to get distracted. And, and when that thinking arises in your head that stops you, sit with it. Get curious about it. Well, that's interesting. I'm... Here I am working on this thing, and now it's telling me to work on something else, but it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel peaceful. It doesn't feel good. If you had to pick one thing to focus on, and I'm not saying you just have to pick one, but if you had to pick one thing to focus on till the end of the year, a thing that you would be so excited if it happened. What would you focus on? How would you create that? How much joy would it bring to your life to create that thing? You have the time. You have the possibilities in front of you. 
I don't care that you haven't done it in the past. Today, as the time I'm literally recording this is 11-11 on May 24th, 2023. That's funny. That's, that's really funny. I'm, I'm a numbers person, so the fact that that was up was interesting. 11-11. It's a new day. It's a new moment. This is your moment. This is your time. You're going to have the noise come up. You're going to mess up. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. Just like on the road to New York City, you might get a flat tire. You might, I mean, there, you, you might hit construction zones. You'll hit rush hour. Like all kinds of things will happen. But if you don't, if you stop worrying about how fast you're getting there, like, I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the video they have like of the tortoise and the hare, of an actual tortoise racing an actual hare. And the tortoise won. I mean, maybe they did it a lot. Who knows? But the, the tortoise won because he just doesn't stop. You don't have to psych yourself up. You don't have to be in the best state. You're going to be in a good mood some days and some days you're not. And, and you're not even going to be able to figure out why. And it's okay. It's like this morning I was just we were playing basketball and I was just super emotional not like crying emotional but it's a point of just getting frustrated and upset and all that stuff and finally i just went out i went out and just kind of sat by myself for a good 10 minutes and most of that went away sometimes we just need a minute when you're gonna have thinking arise i don't know how to do this of course you don't know how to do this you if you knew how to do it, you'd already be there. And you might know how other people have done it. But you can do this. I mean, it's frustrating to be working on the same thing or thinking about working on something and then seeing other people do it. It's like I'm in, I'm in a writer's group. And quite a few of those people, since I've known them, have finished entire books. And I haven't finished mine. I've gotten so caught up with that over overthinking in my head about, okay, is this the right thing to do in this moment? Is this the right thing to do in this moment? If you're overthinking about what to do in the moment, just be still and listen. I mean, turn on, turn on some music, turn on something to, you know, d distract you for a minute. Overthinking never helped anybody. So if you had to pick something from now to the end of the year that you would love to see happen in your life, what would it be? No, I'm not saying you have to pick anything, but it might be really fun to do. Something you really love to see come to fruition in your life. The thing I do want you to do is notice as you're working towards your path, there will be opposition. I mean, in a football game, when you're trying to get to the, the other team's goal line, there's opposition. And it makes it fun. So just notice that you know, this opposition, when it's in your head, it, you know, no matter what events are actually happening in the world, you're still going to have in your head, oh, this means this, this means this. Just be still. And just notice your thinking almost as if Almost as if you were watching a movie. Oh, that's interesting. My thoughts are saying this. Oh, that's interesting. My thoughts are saying this. And just kind of notice, guys. And, and if you want to, to pick something that you're like, you know what, I'd really love to see this come to fruition in my life. And it would, it would be a game changer. Then go play with that and see what happens. But as I, I always say at the end of these... Whatever you felt inspired to do during this conversation today, go do it. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, it's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is. Each Monday morning, 
at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on, and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me, depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world. Then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.